Well, uh, this is actually my first production of Don Giovanni. I've seen it a dozen times, and I've rarely enjoyed productions of it, even though I love the music. I often will close my eyes and listen to wonderful singers sing it. But in terms of a visceral productions that really move me and make me laugh and, and make me cry and all that good stuff, I haven't seen very many of them. So it was my goal to try to do that here. And my main philosophy, really, as a director, it's all about collaboration. The best idea wins. And a good idea is a good idea wherever it comes from. So I really want every singer to have real ownership over his or her character. And I've learned a lot about all of these characters by working with this cast here. Uh, there's that great line in Moonstruck where Olympia Dukakis asks uh, her friend, why do men screw around? And he says, because they're afraid of death. And she says, that's what I thought, right? <laughs> and I think, that, I think that Giovanni's a lot about that. It really is about sex and death, back to the recurring themes of my career. And uh, of really a lot of operas out there, but there's, why does he behave in these ways? And I, one of the great things about Mozart is that it really is open to interpretation. The music is beautiful, there's a lot of repetition in the music, but the characters are, are rich and can go any number of ways. Just one example in Leporello's famous catalog aria where he's telling Donna Elvira about all of the women that Giovanni has slept with. And I've seen it done the same way every single time where he lists off all the women in all the different countries. It's a long aria with a great aria, but you've got to have something to do in it. And Elvira responds and she gets upset and she's, the women are often portrayed very uh, meekly in this opera and the women are very strong in this production. And that's just one example of how we had Matt take out a suitcase and bring out all this memorabilia from all of Giovanni's exploits. He's trying on some of the shirts. It turns him on and it turns her on. And at the end of the aria, they get together. And why shouldn't they? I mean, everybody in this opera is obsessed with sex and death and with uh, sowing their wild oats before death comes to get them. And they're all learning from Giovanni for better or worse. So by portraying Leporello and Love came from Matt as the, the wannabe, uh, you know, he's like the Marlon Brando to Chris's James Dean, right? Or reverse it if you like. I guess Marlon Brando lasted longer, maybe. <laughs> maybe uh, Christopher is the Marlon Brando and Mass the James Dean. We're setting this production in the 50s, which I think works really quite well. Again, you don't have to change any text at all for it to work in the 50s, except for changing swords to blades. That's the only thing that we do. Everything else makes perfect sense in uh, an updated context. So I'm always looking at how, how can we approach each scene in a way that's unconventional and reveal something new about these characters. Elvira is not here today. Melody has become the female version of Don Giovanni, and it's so much more interesting that she is actually a sex addict herself, and out for all these men, as opposed to just running around saying, oh, I miss my boy, and where is he? And it's so hard being a woman. It's like, that's so uninteresting, right? So really bringing out the strength of all of these characters, and this cast has been very inventive in the whole process.